Come and take the rest. I'm that soul, my soul. Only to the devil, and he won't let you go. Welcome everybody to Spiritual Warfare Friday. I'm your host Dan Badandi, and tonight's broadcast selling your soul for rock and roll and the 27 Club. So we're gonna find out what the 27 Club is if you don't know already, and we're gonna get to this uh, music industry, literally not just rock and roll. We talk about all music industry, especially pop and everything else. Uh, you know the popular music that's going on, top 40 and all that. Uh, so we're gonna get into the the occult side of music, the music industry, how people, yeah, we, we understand there are some extremely talented people out there, but however, that's not what really gets you in uh, at the top, you know, it's more than that, it's actually selling your soul, and it's legitly, it's not figuratively either, so I want to thank shakeandwakeradio.com for carrying the show, and also um, beforeitsnews.com as well, so I'm going solo tonight, and yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> so I'm going solo tonight and we're ready to rock. So no pun intended. So, But I'm not solo because we got the Lord Jesus Christ with us tonight and uh, the Holy Spirit and also my brothers in the background here. So Brian Reese can't join us tonight. He's got things to do. So um, also, guys, I want to remind you too, before our show at 7 o'clock Eastern, uh, the you know, FOJC Radio, it's free, um, Followers of Jesus Christ Radio, uh, they got that show, uh, the the Remnant Gathering, it's uh, David and Donna Carrico, awesome show, so please check that out on FOJCRadio.com. So let's begin with the show, and I want to welcome everybody to the chat. Thank you, Harold, for moderating. Thank you, Jace, for moderating as well. So I welcome everybody, Bobby, Chris, Joanne, Joy, 7 Minutes, Tim, Brother Tim, woo, 
Troy, DC Cooper, and everybody else is out there. Thank you guys for joining in. We got people still filing in now, so lots of stuff to talk about tonight. So we're going to get to, well, literally, we got a list of stuff here. Quotes, lyrics, uh, Illuminati hand symbols that they use on the album covers and all that stuff. Then uh, the 27, uh, which is a list of musicians who all died uh, at the age of 27. Is there a link to this? We're going to find out. Uh, Robert Johnson and the Crossroads, uh, the rituals they did, and also uh, more into the spiritual warfare aspects of what these demons are, of music and everything else. Certain rituals they, they did at the Crossroads, the speci specific demons involved in these rituals. So we're going to get to all that and more. So uh, what we're also going to do today, guys, uh, 11.30 tonight, all right? So if you've seen the show two weeks ago, we played it last night again. So basically the September 24th uh, rapture that's supposed to happen, right? A lot of these fake ministries are out there promoting us to say the rapture's happening tomorrow, right? Literally tomorrow, right? And, you know, because last I knew, the Bible says that nobody knows the day of the hour, not even angels in heaven, but I guess some reason that these ministries think, all right, nobody knows the day of the hour, not even the angels, but somehow they do. So what we're going to do, right, we already played the show two weeks ago. We did it live and we uh, replayed it last night. So what we're going to do after this show, so guys, if you're not watching the show later on in the future, today is September 22nd, 2023. So uh, if it's another date, don't even bother uh, because uh, it's going to be a different show. But if you're watching live right now, obviously, after this show, we're going to do a special countdown live on this channel here. We'll put the link toward the end of the show, but a special countdown live to... The rapture. So it's supposed to be September 23rd and all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, we're going to go right into midnight to September 23rd. And, yeah, we're going to do a countdown. And we're going to literally mock these people because they need mocking. They need to be exposed for the frauds that they are, false prophets and everything else. So if any ministry, any so-called ministry leader out there tells you they know when the rapture is, okay, yeah, you tell them to go uh, pound sand, seriously. You know, the Bible says many things need to happen first, and it comes after the tribulation, not before. And we've not yet into the tribulation. Well, I think it might be in the beginning of it, but the tribulation is not over yet. There's several things that need to happen. We'll go over that tonight. Uh, so anyway, uh, selling your soul for rock and roll, the 27 Club. So we've got a lot to talk about, a lot of slides to present, all that good stuff. So let me get to my videos here, and I'm all over the place. So yeah, again, welcome everybody to the show. And uh, so I want to make a statement too. Uh, I know there's people out there that listen to music, okay, rock and roll, and I'm not going to judge you, okay? If you listen to ACDC, whatever the case, uh, you know, I'm I'm not here to judge you. That's your thing, and uh, please, people, don't judge other people, too, if they listen to these this music, you know what I mean? So uh, everybody's walk is different, you know what I'm saying? So, and I'm not saying necessarily listen to the music is evil, you know what I mean? It's just like a lot of the songs, some of the songs are intentionally promoting evil. I just say use discernment. That's all I have to say. You know what I mean? And uh, so um, when I drive down the street, I rarely ever listen to music anyway. I'm always listening to talk shows and everything else and news that's going on and all that stuff. So anyway, um, I want to um, play this video before we get started. I hope I don't get hit with a copyright strike. But uh, it's by Good Fight Ministries, right? And uh, credit to them. It's Good Fight Ministries here. Yeah. So if you guys want to go over there and subscribe to that channel, that's an awesome channel there. Uh, they got... Uh, 185,000 subscribers. So uh, they put a little video. They sold their souls and by you know talk about Jimi Hendrix. So I want to play some of this video to give you a rough idea of what we're going to be talking about tonight. So expand this a little bit. So again, this is a credit to Good Fight Ministries. And if you want to go over the guys, give this a like, share, and subscribe. I'll put the link in the chat room. So you know, look, you know I just want to credit them for the video. And I uh, hope YouTube doesn't hit me with a copyright for this. But yeah, here we go. Ready? Establishment called form of expiration. Hang on, guys. I just I gotta try to avoid some of the music because I don't want to get hit. Yeah, the child stated, "Quote: Things like witchcraft, which is a form of expiration and imagination, have been banned by the establishment and called evil. It's because people are frightened to find out the full power of the mind. The satanic powers Hendrix unleashed through his music, though, were absolutely destructive." Jimi Hendrix opened himself up to demonic beings who used him to initiate the hippie youth into the counterculture revolution. Alan Douglas, the executive curator of Hendrix's musical estate, 
admitted his spirit possession. Now, one of the biggest things about Jimmy was what he believed, and he believed that he was possessed by some spirit, and I got to believe it myself, and that's what we had to deal with all the time, and he was very humble about discussing it with people because he didn't want people to feel like he was being uh, pretentious and so on, but he really believed it, uh, and he was wrestling with it constantly. Jimmy Hendrix's live-in girlfriend, Fane Pridgen also spoke of Hendrix's admission to being demon-possessed and related his demon possession to the reception of his music. He used to always talk about uh, some devil or something was in him, you know, and he didn't have any control over it. He didn't know what made him act the way he acted and what made him say the things he said and and songs and different things like that just come out of him, you know. And But uh, at first I used to think it was a cop-out when he had really done me in, right? And uh, he'd say, I don't know what come over me, you know. I really can't understand it. And, you know, he used to just, you know, grab his hair or something or pull his hand just, or stand in the mirror or cry or something. Oh, Lord, it was so sad when he would cry. He was, maybe he was the first man or maybe the only man that I've ever seen cry, you know, but it just killed me when he cried because he felt like, it, I mean, it seems like to me he was so tormented and just torn apart and like he really was obsessed, you know, with something really evil, you know, and he said, you know, like you're from Georgia, you know, he said, I should know how, you know, people drive demons. He actually thought about, you know, if we ever go, because I used to talk about my grandmother and all her weird stuff, you know, and he used to talk about us going down there and uh, having some root lady or somebody see if she could drive this demon out of him. Make a whole lot of money. And when you get people at their music, Hendrix admitted, quote, I can explain everything better through music. You hypnotize people. And when you get people at their weakest point, you can preach into their subconscious is what we want to say. That's why the name Electric Church flashes in and out. God's word reveals that the use of hallucinogenic drugs like LSD open people up to demonic beings. Albert Hoffman, the Swiss chemist who developed LSD, described his first full-blown experience with the drug in terms of classical demonic possession. Albert Hoffman admitted, quote, a demon had invaded me, had taken possession of my body, mind and soul. I jumped up and screamed, trying to free myself from him, but then sank down again and lay helpless on the sofa. Hoffman states that, quote, most research reports cite, in spite of all other diversity among LSD experimentation, quote, the feeling of an alien being, a demon, seizing possession of oneself are features of LSD inebriation. God's word forbids witchcraft and contact with demonic beings and declares that those who practice witchcraft will be sentenced to the lake of fire forever. God's word declares in Galatians 5, 19 through 21 that those who practice witchcraft will not inherit the kingdom of God. The word witchcraft in the book of Galatians chapter 5 is actually translated from the Greek word pharmakeia. It is from the Greek word pharmakeia that we get words like pharmacy and pharmaceutical. I just mute this for a minute, guys. So just uh, you can read it on the screen because I don't want to get hit with a copyright strike with uh, YouTube. They're strict on music. Angelic beings. Translated witchcraft, sorcery, magic, drugs, and so you get the rest of the point here. So I uh, just wanted to play that real quick because uh give you an idea what we're going to be talking about. So before we go any further, since everybody's logged on now, so uh, if you want to join us in a quick prayer, so Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, please forgive everybody here, uh, all of us individually for our sins that we committed today. And we come to you, Father, and ask you for divine wisdom and understanding. To And we're doing as you command us to do is expose the deeds of evil in Ephesians 5. And that's what we're doing today. And Lord, I pray that you can help me disseminate this information to the folks out there to bring the wisdom, the truth, and exposing the evil that's within our society. So we ask for the Holy Spirit to come upon us all and just give us the strength and knowledge and courage to stand up against this evil and protect us all from the forces of evil. We ask you in your mighty name, amen. So uh, that's number one. Uh, that's uh, prayer, like a covenant. Uh, this way it covers us from the evil that we're going to see and hear, whatever the case, through the show. So 
And it is our job to do you do this. Now, if you go to most churches out there, right, and regular community churches out there, you even dare to talk about this stuff. Oh, man, do they shut you down real quick. They really shut you down. Oh, no, we're not supposed to look into that. We're not supposed to. Yeah, yes, you are supposed to look into that. Because the thing is, how are you going to know the enemy? How are you going to warn people the enemy if you don't know nothing about them? Because this is a spiritual war. This is why it's called Spiritual Warfare Friday, you know. And a war, okay, you can't go into battle unless you know the enemy you need recon right and this applies for real world uh, out in real life here right that when you go in the military right you don't just join the military and go fight that's not how it works you gotta go to um uh, your special training well it's a uh, boot camp they call it, just to get you in shape and acclimated and all that stuff then you gotta go to mos school which is a uh, military officer school whatever you want to be like a military police officer or whatever job you pick in the military right then when you're into that and you're not ready for war yet. So basically, if there's a war going on, a battle, what they do is they specifically bring you into a training for that specific type mission. Then, even then, you need recon before you even go there, right? Just in other words, you're going to go rescue POWs at enemy base, right? You don't just go there. You need recon. You need people, reconnaissance people to go there, take satellite photos and people on the ground to monitor the sentry changes, all that stuff. There's a lot of work involved. All the information and intel goes back to the generals. The generals sit there and plan an operation out. They plan the operation, hand it down to the lower ranks, um, the military officers and the, you know, the sergeants, whatever, and they prepare the troops for that specific type of battle to go in and, and um, excavate um, POWs or whatever the mission is, right? So there's a lot of work involved. Same thing in the spiritual war. How are you going to know anything about the enemy unless you study them? And I'm not saying to get deep into it to know everything about uh, the occult. No, I'm not saying that. There's nothing wrong with somebody who's well-grounded in the faith and the scriptures, right, to study some of the enemy. So you know what the deeds of evil are going on so you can warn other people. Because if it wasn't for people like us out here, I'm not patting my back by all means, but if it wasn't for people like us out here, nobody would know Freemasonry is bad. Nobody would know uh, certain things going on in the world are bad. You know, and that's what the problem with the churches today. They don't want to get into the spiritual warfare no more. Years ago, I mean, like, well, spiritual warfare was the second most important thing. Number one is Jesus. We all could agree to that. But spiritual warfare is very important because you, how are you going to know and protect your children and yourselves from the harm out there unless you know what the enemy is doing? Now, if you get into music, right? Here's the thing with music. And I, I witnessed this, right? And I actually uh, did beta tests on it. So years ago when I worked at Wendy's, <laughs> you know, the burger joint there. So uh, in the dining room, they would play this music. Uh, it was just music that you just want to slice your wrist on. Uh, depressing music, right? And you see everybody's attitude in the restaurant, right? So one day I went to this Johnny Rockets place. It's a 50s nostalgia place. So you walk into the restaurant, right? They're dressed like in the 1950s. Uh, the waiters are dancing around. They got this high-energy music back in the 50s, like the old rock and roll. Everybody's like wide awake. They're active. They're eating more and everything else, right? And in the restaurant, they're playing a soft, uh, light music, you know what I mean? Just depressing songs. And everybody, you know, driving at the Wendy's like this. It barely finish their food, you know what I mean? And uh, I studied the psychology of this. They do this in the churches, too. This is what they do in the churches. They use music to pump people up emotionally. They, they target your emotions. It's a psychological warfare that goes on, right? Music is a massive psychological warfare tactic that they use, right? It's used in churches, used in stores, used in um, when I worked at the casino, too, Foxwoods Casino, right? They purposely play music in the background that makes you... It, it targets the subconscious. In other words, it makes you go in there, you feel good about yourself. You feel great. And you just say you even have 100 bucks. It makes you feel like rich and given. So you have no problem throwing that money into the machine. You know what I mean? So music is used for psychological purposes all over the place. And if you notice too, you know what I mean? When you go to certain places, right? The music that's playing affects your mood. It affects everything. You know what I mean? It affects the people around you. You know, and, and it gets people happy, it gets people sad, depressed, all hyped up, all that stuff. And in the gym, when I go to the gym, they play some, they, a lot of times they play some good music that makes you pumped up. You're alive and you're like, you want to kick butt on the weights, you know what I mean? So uh, versus playing like old country music or something, you don't want to play that in the gym, you know what I mean? Or soft music. But um, music is used for this kind of stuff, psychological. And the thing is, so yeah, when you go to a wedding, everybody's having fun, you play some happy music, it's a good time, right? 
And I'm not saying all music is bad or evil. I'm not saying any of that stuff, right? It's just how it's used by people specifically and strategically for a purpose. Like the false ministries, I say it all the time, what they'll do is you go into a church, right? And these are the money-grabbing churches. The dispensationalist churches, the prosperity churches, the Joel Osteens and all that stuff, even before Joel Osteen comes out on stage, right? They've already got you pumped up. Because before Joel Osteen steps foot on stage, right, they sit there and pound you about half hour, 45 minutes of music. Boom, boom, the, the specific music that makes you feel emotional, driven, right? So basically when Joel Osteen comes out on stage, people already got tears in their eyes. They're already uh, uh, full of adrenaline, you know what I mean? So Joel Osteen says, oh, I want everybody out here, even though the guy's suit's worth more than most of our cars. I want everybody out here to give me $1,000 each. And they'll find $1,000 somehow to give it to them because they're emotionally driven, you know what I mean? And the churches use this, and then it's used in uh, all kinds of different things. And uh, so when you go to these um, uh, concerts and all that, yeah, most of generally, you know, you've got a regular singer out there. You know, wants people to have a good time, you know? Some people enjoy the music, whatever music it is, they have a good time. But I'm not saying it's all evil or used for evil intentions, but sometimes it is, you know what I mean? So that's what we've got to look for. So basically you know, what happens, right, especially back in the 60s and 70s and 80s when rock was really kicking off. Rock was, I think rock was at its peak in the 80s. Then it started dying down a little bit in the 90s, whatever the case, but, um, but yeah, it was at its peak. So... A lot of these people, they, you know, back then, we didn't have uh, internet, nothing like that, right? We just had, you know, you woke up and went out and did stuff. You were never home, right? So people wanted to be famous. They wanted to be entertainers, you know what I mean? So what do they do? They go out and, you know, I want to be a rock star that looks so cool, you know, and uh, grow your hair out and all that stuff. So uh, what they would do, and it's not just the rock stars. There's blues singers we're going to get into and everything else and all kinds of, like today, and the pop culture and all that. So they want fame. And they try this thing out, and most of the time, most people, they don't cut it. You know what I mean? People are like, yeah, you stick to your day job, you know? So they're not satisfied with that. They want fame. So they'll come across something, and this is many singers' testimonies, that they couldn't even play in the bar without getting kicked out. Then they meet somebody in the, out of nowhere to say, hey, listen, uh, you want to get rich and famous? I'll make you rich and famous. You sign your soul to the devil, literally. And the people think it's a joke at the time. I'm like, yeah, who cares? Well, they don't know any better. They'll do this. The next thing, they're playing out stadiums. You know what I mean? So um, this stuff is real. Regardless of what you think about it, this is real stuff out there. And a lot of these, mu if you actually study the lyrics, um, there's a song we'll get to later too uh, by Katy Perry. It's called E.T. Oh, my uh, girlfriend, she used to sing that, right? And I'm like, I stopped the way there. It's like, do you know what you're singing? She goes, oh, Katy Perry, uh, E.T., right? So I said, no, no, you know the lyrics, right? She goes, well, I just recite them, right? I said, do you actually understand what you're saying? She goes, not really. And I showed her. It's like, yeah, she's singing about getting pregnant by the extraterrestrial, which is a demonic being. You know what I mean? It's a, a fallen angel. Getting pregnant well, back in the days of Noah when the uh, fallen angels were impregnating a woman on the earth. As it will be in the end times, you know what I mean? And that's going on now in the occult especially. That a lot of women have sex with fallen angels or demons. But, and it's real. It's real stuff, you know what I mean? So we're going to get to all this stuff. Uh, you know, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. So uh, I want to get to some quotes. Um, I was going to play some videos too. I'll get to that in a bit. But I'm just going to show you a couple more people, like literally, who sold their souls, literally. And they don't have, to, especially today, they have no problem at all admitting oh, that. Oh, okay, so... This guy here is uh, one of the island boys. Yeah, just a bunch of uh, social media people. It's like, I don't know how people find these guys famous or not. Well, regardless. But his his testimony, right? Somebody asked him, did you sell your soul? You guys keep asking me and keep bugging me about the same question over and over again. You're asking why and stuff like that. Look, man, I'm going to keep it real with you. I wasn't happy, so I, I did what I had to do. You know, I said this once before. I don't know how many times I had to say it. It is what it is. It, that's just what life it just is. It came at a r random time in my life. And um, I was going up, but I wasn't going up as fast as I wanted to. So the fastest way I could do it was by doing that. I wasn't happy already. So I'm like, what can make me happy? You know, which I asked for money and fame. And um, yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, one of the island boys, and yes, uh, somebody in the chat room was that the kid that kissed his brother, yeah, and he did, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to say it, 
Uh, I'll just say he put something in his mouth from his... Uh, to leave it at that. Disgusting. Just to get some clicks. Not even joking. And these are celebrities who admit they sold their souls to the devil. Hope I don't get binged for uh, copyright. So credit to this channel, AZ Prod Productions here. So credit to this channel, guys, if you want to subscribe to them too. Honestly, too scared to stand up for something. They scared to lose their house, or they scared to lose their record deal. I said, honestly, too scared to stand up for something. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa came with a few toys like a Happy Meal. I'm spaced out, dog. I be on that moon talk. I wonder if God asked Mike how to moonwalk. Oh. oh, look at all of us. What a bunch of lucky buggers we are, right? To make a life out of doing something that we love, right? That's extraordinary. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of that for so many years. Um, thank you to my beautiful wife, who told me less is more. Say less right now, she knows the dumb crap that can come out of my mouth at times. Um, uh, thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. Um, and I just think that the whole idea of celebrity and fame has become really convoluted and, you know, kind of bastardized. Like, whereas fame used to be the byproduct of success, and now it's the ultimate goal. And you, if, you're, if your ultimate goal is to be famous, then you're going to do a lot to, do, to get there. Like, sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil. Like, you're going to end up in a, on a one-way street, and it's going nowhere. Like, that's just the truth. I've seen, I've seen so many people, like forsake their 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 moral code and their value systems just for a little bit of fame and it's it's not worth it at the end of the day it's really not you're still out here doing these songs you know you're still on tour i do but i don't take it for granted why do you still do it why are you still out here well it goes back to the destiny thing i, mean, I made it to bargain with it you know a long time ago and i'm holding up my hand what was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth, and then, uh, and then in a world we can't see. And of course, Rihanna is in the building. Hey, Angie. Through, through. <laughs> I cannot believe it's been so long that we I have know. done this. You know. I am misunderstood a lot at, at times. Uh, my music, my image, people have their whole uh, their whole thing about me, whether it be a me being a devil worshiper or whatever. Besides them reading into my hand over my eye on my album cover. <laughs> Why is your hand over your eye? Because <laughs> I'm a devil worshiper. What are you talking about? Um, yeah, I mean, I released a gospel record when I was 15 um, because I grew up in, uh, you know, a household where all I ever did was listen to gospel music and my parents are both traveling ministers and so that was kind of like my first in to, my first introduction to music. That's all I ever knew. That was my life, my faith, my church, my church friends and things like that. So that's how I got introduced to the music industry is through gospel music. And then it didn't work out. Like it, it was quite a little blip on the radar. I think the label went um, bankrupt or what have you. And because yeah. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. So yeah, just one. Um, yeah, show some of these videos and give you an idea of what we're going to, you know, be talking about and everything else, and just uh, some testimonies, because I know people tune in and be like, yeah, right, um, yeah, they didn't say that, you know, this is from their own mouths, yeah, I got a couple more, this is Rihanna, uh, attended multiple exorcisms. Barbados was a little bit different than her celeb life in LA, how different? Well, she's seen things most of us have only seen in horror movies, think you know what we're talking about? 
Creeping in at number nine, Brianna has attended multiple exorcisms. Brianna's childhood was downright spooky. She remembers multiple times when her family would go to church and in the middle of a ceremony, someone would get up screaming and spin out of control. This is uh, Eats Entertainment, so I can't play much of that, but uh, let me see if I get to another quote by her here. Which we got some in that slide, so. Yeah, because I don't want to play too much of that video because it is copyrighted, that one. And that, those people don't give you the credit. They'll, you know, they won't let you use that stuff. So, yeah, uh, un unreal. So what we're going to do is go to get some quotes now from some sa famous singers over the time. So that, uh, this is Robert Johnson. He's known literally for selling a soul. This is not a secret or a conspiracy theory. Uh, he was known for selling a soul at the crossroads. So we're going to get into that because that will tie into the 27 Club. So that's toward the end here. So, but he says, I went down to the crossroad, fell down on my knees, asked the Lord above, have mercy now, save poor Bob if you please, right? Then that's where he met this guy uh, named uh, Papa Ligre, Papa Ligre, which was like a voodoo type demon. We're going to get to that later. Uh, uh, w that asked him, say, let's just sell your soul, whatever the case. And Robert Johnson, he, his testimonies, he himself said he couldn't even play in the bar. He got booed and everything else. He, he sucked. You know what I mean? Excuse the language, but he sucked. And uh, after he sold his soul, right, his fame went through the roof. So this is um, Moby. I think that's the guy you see in the video saying uh, about Satan. But he says, for his sake, I'm sorry that Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil. But for the sake of the sake of music, I'm glad I, he did. So this is this guy glorifying Robert Johnson. This guy's in the music industry, Moby. Uh, so I don't know who he is. I'm not too good into pop culture, whatever the case. But he's basically saying, that, you know, thankfully Robert Johnson sold and sold to the devil because we wouldn't have rock music today. That's what he's saying. Which is, uh, it's sad, it really is. So this is um, Jim Morrison. One, of, He's very famous. So he says, I met the spirit of music, an appearance of the devil on a Venice canal running, and I saw Satan moving beside me, a fleshly shadow of my uh, secret mind. This is Jim Morrison. These are direct quotes. You can actually fact check these if you want. If you want to take screenshots, I invite people to do so. Take screenshots and go fact check these things because I know there's a lot of skeptics. And here's the thing, too. When you start talking about somebody, somebody idolizes, they get offended off the bat. Oh, you didn't say that, or whatever the case, and they get all bent, they go all butter, you know what I mean? So they, because they don't want to swallow that pill that that person they grew up idolizing or whatever is not who they think it is. So it is it is hard to swallow. And all of us, when we grown up and we looked up to people, and we found out half these people, either druggies or whatever the case, right? Yeah, it is a bitter pill to swallow. But, you know, the truth is the truth. Nobody said the truth is going to be clean. Nobody said the truth is going to be so easy, you know? But this is the way it is. And again, I challenge you to look up these quotes. These are real quotes. And uh, Little Richard, he said, I was directed and commanded by another power, the power of darkness, that a lot of people don't believe exists. And the uh, power of the devil, Satan. And that's true. Most people out there, they'll laugh at this stuff. Even though Little Richie fans, right? Little Richard, Little Richie, the same thing. His fans, right? He can literally tell his fans that, right? They'll just laugh it off. That's how the mind control is. And Kanye West, uh, Mr. Uh, so-called Christian, he's he's not a Christian. If anybody thinks Kanye West is a Christian, you got another thing coming. Uh, he, this guy's a clown. He says, I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. At least it came with a few toys, like a Happy Meal. That's what you heard that in the video. And Metallica, right? It says, the devil take my soul with diamonds you repay. I don't care for heaven, so don't go look for me to cry. And I will burn in hell from the day I die. That's uh, I don't think that's all the group leaders, whatever, but... Uh, a couple of the guys in Metallica did that. That's why Dave Mustaine, he used to be in Metallica, and he created Megadeth. Dave Mustaine, yeah, he's anti-New World Order. So basically when Dave Mustaine was running with Metallica, 
I met Dave down in Texas when I worked for Infowars. I had uh, yeah, I spent a day with him. And he's pretty cool. But um, he wanted to start writing songs against the establishment, against the New World Order, right? When he was Metallica, they said no because they want to stay mainstream, you know. So he went off on his own, created Megadeth. Uh, if you ever listen to Megadeth, if you like rock music and go listen to Megadeth, he it, look check the lyrics out. He's like exposing deep stuff in the New World Order and everything else. His last album that came out back uh, like ten years ago was pretty good. Uh, exposing the New World Order and martial law and all that stuff. So, uh, and the thing is, a lot of these people later on, you got to understand when these these singers, right? When they're young, they're dumb. Okay, we're all dumb when young, we're young, right? They later on come out to admit, yeah, I did stupid things, I took drugs and all that stuff. And thank God, most a lot of these guys led their way out. Like I think Ozzy Osbourne is a Christian now. Of all people, this guy used to bite uh, head, literally take a bat, a live bat, and bite the head off of it. And you know, spew all kinds of satanic stuff. Now he's a uh, Christian. Is Ozzy Osbourne or, uh, or he's Alice Cooper? Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper, yeah. I always get the two mixed up for some reason because they have similar looks. But yeah, uh, and Katy Perry, right? I sold my soul to the devil. And when you see the video later, you gotta see, understand. What, <laughs> yeah, you you don't make the stuff up. You don't make the stuff up. You see the music videos. You do not make those things up, okay? The producers come up with these music videos to put a purpose, and it's an occult ritual. This is not art and entertainment. This is occult rituals that poses art and entertainment. And uh, Katy Perry fans, they're, they're oblivious to this. She's sitting in a puddle of goo, being raped by an alien, which is a demon, right? Unreal. And Nicole Paluzzi, Snooky, this, oh man, I, I can't. <laughs> yes, uh, South Park, yeah. Oh man. Uh, you ever see that uh, the trashy show, Jersey Shaw? I kept hearing about it when it came out. I sat there and literally watched an episode. I'm like, what in the hell are you people watching? Oh, this show's cool. It's a reality show. And they got these tra literally trashy people. And I'm talking about, yeah, I'm not going to get into it, whatever the case. But, yeah, this is one of the main stars. All right. So he says, why not sell my soul and go on Jersey Shore? That's what I did. And you know what? It's been awesome. And now this girl's got world stardom fame. Not to mention she's a mega hussy, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm not going to get into it. It's such a trashy show. So uh, 50 Cent, right? And he's probably got, he's probably five cent now. <laughs> he's dead. Uh, he's gone. You know, he's not in, uh, famous no more. Whatever. But he says, I sit and look at life from a different angle. Don't know if go I'm God's child or Satan's child. It's Satan's angel. I'm sorry. So he's questioning himself: Am I God's child or Satan's angel? That's uh, not something a professing Christian should say, or somebody that claims to believe in God. And Marilyn Manson, this crackpot, right? And this guy is literally, like, okay, literally on stage with his own voice between songs, literally called for the death of Christianity and Christians. And no, it's not just entertainment. You're not going to sit there purposely, okay, and to encourage your fans. And I can see a song, may, you may play the role, like you're wrestling, some people play the role of a demon, whatever the case. But if you're specifically in an interviews and between songs and after your concerts, specifically bashing anything to a Christianity. Yeah, you're not right. He goes, I'll be remembered as the person who brought an end to Christianity. This guy had a sustained hatred for anything to do with God. I can't stand this guy. It's one of those guys that you want to jump on stage and punch him right in his face. <laughs> Literally. And uh, that's one of those guys. Yeah. He's just an arrogant little beep. Yeah. So Carlos Santana, right? He says the energy of devils and angels is the same energy. It's about how you use it. It's fuel. You meditate. You got these can the candles. You got the incense, and you've been chanting. All of a sudden, you hear a voice write this down. So no, devils and angels are not the same thing. And this is uh, based on New Age philosophy in the occult. The energies of these things and all that. And so basically he would summon these demons and they would give him lyrics to write his songs. That's how he wrote these uh, top hit songs. From his own minutes. You could, again, you could challenge all these quotes. And you got uh, Waka Flocka. I don't know who that this guy is, but he says, Lord, take back, take my back. Uh, the devil entered me. So he's actually crying out. 
uh, to, you know, saying, hey, I've been possessed. The devil entered me. That means you've been possessed. So at least he's trying to come out of the occult. And I don't know what happened after that, uh, if he did or not. I hope and pray he did. But again, a lot of these guys don't realize until later. Because here's the thing. When you sell your soul like this, okay, oh, yeah, you get fame and fortune. You get money. You get the girls. You get the cars. You get um, everything you want in your life and more, right? But you're miserable. If you look at all these people who have all this money and everything else, they are miserable people. Very miserable. And later on, they start getting sick physically and all that stuff. Because what happens, right, when they, the 15 minutes of fame are over, they start declining. You're no longer good for Satan. You're, you, Satan's like, what am I going to use you for now? You, you, nobody cares about you no more. So see you later. And then life's getting miserable. They lose their money half the time. They, you know, they're just they're pure miserable, plain and simple. They end up offing themselves or whatever happens, you know what I mean? And so when Satan gets done using you, right, yeah, he throws you out. It's like a pimp, you know what I mean? You got a, uh, a woman that's overused, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you, off you go into the street. You're, you're good for nothing. That's what Satan does. He pimps you out to, uh, to mislead so many people. Then on your way down, you yeah, it's, it's down, all right? You're coming off that ladder real quick. And thank God a lot of these people realize, all right, I did something stupid. So I'm going to seek Jesus Christ. And if anybody's going through that right now, I pray that you do that. Uh, that if you did something like this, guys, I pray that you. As me, as the thing too, I don't care what kind of contract you got. I don't care if you did write that contract in blood. I don't care if you did take a sworn oath, whatever the case. Those contracts could be broken with the blood of Jesus Christ. None of those contracts could bind you. If you uh, come to the blood of Jesus Christ, that blood of Jesus Christ cancels those contracts out. And what you need to do, too, is when you get out of this, right? Because I had a, a family relative who was in the music business. And uh, so he was into Satanism, right? So he left that part of it, right? But he was still attached to the band. So a lot of stuff in his life were going bad. So I told him, you need to do away with that stuff because it's a stronghold. And uh, hopefully someday I can get him on here to talk about that. So, uh, so one of my cousins there. So uh, anyway, you know. Thank God he's trying to get out of this. And a lot of times, so you'll see uh, stars like Britney Spears, right? In I don't know, the last few years back, uh, she was going through some major problems. And her father was making excuses for it and everything else. So it sounds like to me she was trying to come out of the occult. Now, when they do this, right, the industry will blackball you. They'll make you seem like a lunatic, this, that, and the other thing. They'll run your name through the dirt and probably kill you if they could. So it looked like Britney Spears was coming out of this trance, if you will, and they, they really ridiculed her through the mud. So uh, J. Cole, he says, uh, feeling like a puppet and the devil is a Geppetto. Uh, get, get, you know, so it's big Geppetto is like if you've seen the movie uh, Pinocchio, Geppetto is the, the father, whatever the case, that created the, the puppet. He's the puppet master. So the devil is the puppet master, he's saying. So he's feeling like a puppet because the devil's using him. The devil's his puppet master to do his biddings. So and uh, I know some people are going to question, why would, why would they do this? Why would Satan do this? Well, again, to mislead people. Because here's the thing. If you could put your person on the world stage that when you play your music, right, people from all over the world listen to it, right? If you go right now to some of these music videos, right, you'll see there's millions, millions and millions of hits on these videos. And all the comments, oh, she's so great, whatever. People worship these people. So if they're out there promoting anything satanic, guess what? Most of their fans are going to be into the satanic stuff too. That's why Satan uses this stuff for. This is a uh, young Jeezy. If we're dancing with the devil, then at least teach us how to dance. It wasn't designed to make it out like I was never had a chance. Like we never had a chance. So asking the devil to teach him how, you know what I mean, to dance. Which is, the, you know, being famous and everything. And here, Aleister Crowley, right? I got to do a show on this guy, man. <laughs> Now, Alistair Crowley was not a musician, right? But he, however, uh, he is literally tied into the music industry, uh, even though he was dead before, you know, rock and roll even started. So a lot of, uh, was it Alice Cooper that took, bought his mansion? No, it was uh, Ozzy. Jimmy Page, I think, from Led Zeppelin. 
oh, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin bought Alistair Crowley's mansion, right? And now this guy, Alistair Crowley, he is known as the Beast, who well, the wickedest man alive, literally. And it, he had that name for a reason. This guy was very evil, belonged to many secret societies, created the Order of the Lima, and uh, he was a practitioner off of Madame Page P. Bowlowski. This guy, when it comes to evil guys, under Satan, if anybody in the world right now, right, like he's dead now, but at the time, right, if there could be anybody that's almost up there like Satan in the human flesh, this would be the guy. I'm going to do a show on this guy. So anyway, he says, I was not content to be just believe in Satan. I wanted to be the chief of his staff. So in other words, he wasn't content just being a Satanist. Okay, he, he wanted to be like one of his top dogs, and he was. Now he's in the like oh hell going to the lake of fire soon. This guy was evil, man. The stuff he did with children, uh, I'm, it's unspeakable. I don't know if I could even mention on YouTube, but the stuff he did with children, the rituals he did is horrifying. But Jimmy Page bought his mansion, and this here, you know this, you know that this here when you know people do the rock and roll symbol, right? That originated from this stuff here. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know the person who invented the hand sign language. Uh, she was a Satanist, right? I forgot her name, but she injected this because it means I love Satan, right? And so, now, granted, when you see people talk and they do this by accident, don't take that literally. You know what I mean? I do that sometimes. I'll talk and I'll be like this or like this by accident when I'm realizing it. People just go too far with this stuff, you know what I mean? So, I'm just saying the people who purposely do that to vote things, right? And I know somebody's probably going to freeze the video to say, oh, look, Dan Bedanti is a Satanist. You know what I mean? No, it's not. But, you know, you got to literally purposely invoke it. Uh, to even have any kind of significance. So, and do not by accident, it's not going to do nothing, guys. So don't worry about it. So, um, or to demonstrate what I'm saying. So, anyway, yeah, this guy was, uh, yeah, he was the inspiration of rock and roll. I don't know how, uh, what the story is about it, but uh, a lot of musicians, uh, it was a song, Mr. Crowley, is that, uh, that's Ozzy, right? Yeah. yeah, Ozzy Osbourne wrote a song, Mr. Crowley. I'll show you the lyrics in a little while here. But yeah, uh, he was a big inspiration for the rock and roll era. And you got Fergie, right? She says, the devil comes and soon my con subconscious and conscious might start to brawl as a cunning demon takes me and it's a voodoo doll. So yeah, then it's the same concept you hear from most of these musicians about something taking them over. We're referring to a devil or a demon, whatever the case, yeah. The battle of our subconscious and the conscience. So basically, a conscience is by telling her, you know, I need to get the heck out of this stuff. But the subconscious that's been taken over by the devil is battling with her. It's Jim Morrison here. Yeah, he was in the dream um, Wayne's World. <laughs> you ever see the movie Wayne's World? It's funny, but yeah. Anyway, uh, Jim Morrison says in that year there was an intense visitation of energy. I left school and went down to the beach uh, to live. I slept on a roof, and that night the moon became the woman's face, and I met the spirit of music. And then you notice how the spirit of music that came up to again here the second time? The spirit of music, an appearance of the devil. On a Venice canal, running I saw Satan, or satire moving beside me, in a fleshy shadow of my secret mind. So it's the second time we heard the spirit of music. You know, and we're gonna to get to that later when we get to spiritual warfare, which a lot of people believe Satan is he was the angel of music. And again, when we, you know, now I'm not saying music's evil. What happens is like they take things of God, right, and they put a perverted merit twist to it in the occult to make it evil. So again, the spirit of music, and that's Satan. Brad Pitt said, a famous actor, I could rely. I'm sorry, I could really try on something different. For myself, that was Satanism. It's working out really well. I made a pact. That's why. So, yeah, that's why I'm famous. That's why like half the girls in the world want to sleep with me. Sickening, really. Yeah, it's just, yeah, but yeah. Because he made a pact with the devil. And John Lennon, right? He says, I've sold my soul to the devil. This is all self admittance. Uh, they admitted all this stuff, guys. And this is Jay Cole. He says, sold my soul to Satan. I've been dancing with the devil. So when you go get to hell, you can know. You can. Uh, let me see. I'm sorry to read this. When you go to hell, you can say you know me. 
um, easily distracted by the dark side. Devil follow me for the fortune. Some sold the soul to Satan. Was on track for the first two years, and then I let the devil steer. Now I got to mask my tears, but allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Cold, and born sinner, opposite of a winner. But the devil run uh, the TV, so the demons and him, and I'm in trouble. Big deal with the devil. But uh, now I'm pleading with him, like, give me my soul. I ain't letting go, but the devil won't play fair. So, again, another conflict. Okay, these people signed the pact, whatever the case. The Satan's taking them over, and now they want their souls back. They want their lives back, but they can't do it. And they're living in pain and terror. You know what I mean? And, again, they have the mansions, the cars, and the girls, and everything else, but yet they, they, they live miserably. And that's why they result to more drugs and alcohol to, to cope with what they're dealing with. You know what I mean? So when, um, in, the, in, the, in the music industry, the drugs are highly, highly recommended and pushed because they know in the music industry, the people who run the music industry, they know what's going on. These people are literally working for Satan. They know what's going on, okay? They know if you induce drugs, right, any psychotropics, it enhances, dramatically enhances the possession. That's why if you look into voodoo cults and, uh, you know, even ancient North American uh, Indian medicine, right, and uh, the certain cults, they highly encourage psychotropics because it alters your state of consciousness. This way it provides like a floodgate, opens that floodgate into the penile gland to allow these energies in, these demonic energies to take you over. That's why it's highly recommended in the occult world, in, uh, which is the music industry too. And this is a Nicki Minaj, Minaj, whatever, Minaj, okay, <laughs> Nicki Minaj, Minaj. So, Roman is crazy boy who lives in me. So she calls this demon that's in her, Roman, that's his name. And he says the things I don't want to say. I asked him to leave, but he can't. He's here for a reason. People conjured him up, and now he won't leave. So Nicki Minaj, yeah, uh, she's like saying she can't get rid of him. But um, somehow, some you know miraculous way, Nikki, you could ever hear me, and anybody that knows her, the only way you could get rid of him is calling on the name of Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter how deep embedded he's in you and everything else. Okay, the name of Jesus Christ will instantly free you from him. Then you got to turn from your ways as well and repent from the stuff, so that demon doesn't come back. So that demon called Roman is uh, going to get his butt kicked by the blood of Jesus Christ. So Eminem, right, he says, I sold my soul to the devil. I'm going to hell. I'm heading to hell. I want the money, the woman, the fortune, and the fame. That means I'll end up burning in hell, scorching in flames. Satan will be uh, to see me later to see if I'm interested in being partners. Devil worship and Satan music. Yeah, so ask yourself, uh, Eminem, is it worth your soul? <laughs> no, it's not. Not at all. Sickening that people just do that. People get desperate. I understand whatever, but you know, actually, I don't understand it. Don't uh, condone it in any way. Got a few more quotes here. All you people out there, Satan is my master. He always been as Justin Timberlake. And if you watch these people's videos, right, you can see the symbolism in the background. It's not openly in your face sometimes. Sometimes it is, but these symbolisms are put in there purposely. We're gonna show you some of the videos later. Uh, but yeah. This is Jimi Hendrix again. He goes, through music, you hypnotize, hypnotize people. And when you get them, their weakest point, you can preach into their subconscious what we want to say. Who's we? Yeah, demons. That's why what's the name we're saying about uh, she has a battle between the subconscious and the conscience. Your conscience is where the Holy Spirit will say, hey, what you're doing is wrong, right? And your subconscious is taken over by demonic spirits. So you guys see a lot of similarities between these quotes. And that's here's the thing too. That's how you know this stuff is not a joke. Because if you look at all the quotes, you generally put them together with the terms and uh, the keywords. You're going to see they're very similar to all the others. Eminem, I sold my soul to the devil. I'll never get it back. Well, Eminem, you can get it back. All you have to do is call upon Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, to break that contract. Drake says, if you dare sell your soul to the devil, you get more green. 
Well, guess what? <laughs> you sell your soul to the devil, you're going to get more fire. That's what you're going to get. The Beatles, right? We're more popular than Jesus. I don't know which will go first, rock and roll or Christianity. And I, I hate to say it, man. The music, I, I was never into that stuff at all. I, every time I heard them, just like, it's just loud, screechy music. There's no bass in it. Just, ugh, you know. I was never a fan of those people. Regardless, whatever. The, you know. And, so to sit there and make yourself, oh, I'm more famous than Jesus. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, how's that working out for you now? Nobody, half the generations don't even know who the hell you are. To this day, thousands of years later, people still know who Jesus is. So, you know, talk to every singer out there, every musician, every Hollywood person, right? Yeah, your name might be in lights for X amount of years, right? A couple of decades, maybe, right? But yeah, after that, it's going to fade away. Jesus never fades away. Jesus, 2,000 years later, 2,023 years later, the name Jesus is still the most popular thing in the world. So don't ever think you're going to excel to the level or beyond uh, Jesus Christ. We're supposed to humble ourselves before Christ. So Michael Jackson says, you know, this he was into Kabbalah and everything else, right? So he goes, your cameras can't control the minds of those who know that you'll even sell your soul just to get a story sold. And he's right about that. Because most of the people have no clue at all. Not a clue. And they're so start them over these people that even if they told them themselves, they're not going to listen. Which they do come out. And I don't know how many people, like with Katy Perry especially, oh, she didn't say that. That's not true. Well, she said he has a, the video of herself saying it. And they, they still don't want to believe it. They just stop talking to you because they, they can't accept that. Because the whole reality, the whole false reality has been shattered before them. And they think by avoiding it or ignoring it, it goes away and it goes back to normal. No. Madonna, right? Yeah, this Queen Hussey. Yeah, and the white go. I forgot her real name. I, I think that's her real name. But you know what a Madonna is? A, a, a Madonna, okay, goes back to Nimrod. It's called Madonna and a Child, which was Isis and her son Tammuz. That's where that goes back, right? It's always this mother goddess type figure, right, with the baby. That's why the Catholic Church uses images of Mary and Jesus, which is not Mary and Jesus. It's actually Samaritan and Tammuz. But yeah, she represents that. And uh, that's why she's videos with snakes around her you know, neck and all that stuff. And all this like uh, Isis, Simmerimus type DD uh, garment she wears. And she goes, I don't give a damn if I go to hell. She's into the Kabbalah. Big time. And Kurt Cobain, right? Uh, one of the 27 club members here. He says, drink beer, smoke pot, and worship Satan. And exactly the way he did. Then end up killing himself uh, at the age of 27. So Elvis Presley, right? Uh, the king of rock and roll, yeah. And someday in the near future, he says, we'll see how the so-called ministers of God react as if they see their worn-out ways in a whole age, old age start crumbling. And they'll get theirs. Uh, I can't wait till the new age comes. So yeah, he was big into the new age movement. So there's nothing new about the New Age, by the way. We expose the New Age many times. The New Age movement is like thousands of years old. It's a New Age from God's way. So the the old age, they call, what they call, right, is what we follow, the traditions of God and uh, the, the rules of God and everything. The New Age is this new movement uh, to uh, a higher conscience type thing, which is a bunch of baloney, right, to say you could become your own God and everything else. It's Satan's biggest lie, by the way, and uh, the God in Eden. So that's the concept. So... That's what they wanted to to spend to the new age away from Jesus, away from God. Which you can't avoid uh, Jesus. Is this Don who? Uh, Don, Don McLean, I think that's it. Is. He goes, as you sell your soul and sow your seeds, and you wound yourself and your loved ones bleed, and your habits grow and your conscience feeds, all that you thought. You should be. Yeah. That's crazy. I don't even know what the heck that means, but yeah, sow your seeds. Sounds like he's mocking the Bible, if you ask me, because Jesus with the parable of the seeds, the sower in uh, Matthew. And talking about conscience 
Again, again, you, a lot of similarities between these quotes. Conscious, subconscious, uh, energies, uh, different um, names for demons and all that. Yeah. And this is Don Mc Morgan, I think it is. Dan Morgan. So, sold my soul to the devil for a nice uh, penmanship. Now I write real pretty, but I'm starting to regret it. So, I don't know who this is. I think this is some probably famous journalist or whatever, or author. But yeah, and a lot of these people too, they'll write stuff uh, under demonic influence. And it's not them doing it. It's like the demon takes control of their body and they write these things, either music or a, a book or something, and they take the credit for it, obviously, and they get the money for it, but it's not them doing it. And Christine Aguilera, right? She says, the devil is in my soul, and so my heart became a, a grave. The flame just burns without control. I am the master and the slave. And you can see in the videos and when you see these people in constant real life, you can see literally the, them being possessed. So, yeah, it's crazy. So, good mother who... Elvis had a good mother who loved Jesus, J.D. Gerald. Yeah, I'm sure I, I'm sure she did because a lot of people back then, especially Southern people, were very religious, you know what I mean, and, uh, which is a good thing. But, again, when you... And the thing is, look what they did to Miley Cyrus. That girl was like, uh, when she was young, okay, when she was coming up and everything, her uh, father, was, what's the country singer her father? Billy Ray, Cyrus. Billy Ray Cyrus, right? And you can't say nothing really bad about the man, right? He was, you know, apparently like a good person, right? So his daughter, Miley Cyrus, right, known as Hannah Montana, you know what I mean? She was coming up good, you know, pure, dressed modestly and everything else. Then boom, she turned into this gargoyle, looks like from the goes of, from the Ghostbusters, you know? And, uh, yeah, and the stuff she preached now, I think she's back to normal, hopefully. But, I mean, yeah, they corrupted her big time. So you could come from the best homes. You could come from the preacher uh, as a parent, right? And, yeah, they especially, you know, uh, children of a preacher or something, they love nothing more to corrupt them. They love nothing more than that because it helps them in their agenda. So I'm going to get some of the lyrics here. I'm going to smock this here. Because I got so much stuff I don't want to lose track here. I saw the Beatles, right? Hang on a second. Got this video in the background. And the Beatles we were just talking about. Right? They had a, a album called Sgt. Pepper, right? Guess who Sgt. Pepper is? If you look at the album, right? Who's that man in the bald-headed man in the background? That's Aleister Crowley. We just got done talking about he was Sergeant Pepper. And Alistair Crowley, born Edward Alexander Crowley, also known as both uh, Freda Perduda and Latin for a shell and door till the end, which is mocking what? Uh, Matthew 24, right? When Jesus says, uh, we need to door to the end. Again, they call it, take words of scripture and twist it around in the occult, right? So, and Alistair Crowley was also known for the famous saying, do what thou wilt. No, as do what you want. It's a satanic thing, right? And he was uh, known as the Great Beast 666, an English occultist, mystic, ceremonial magician, a poet, and who was responsible for the founding of the religious philosophy of Dalima and many secret societies. He was in the Illuminati. He was uh, Freemasonry. He was uh, in many, many orders, okay? And if you actually read his books, uh, this guy was into so many secret societies. He knew so many tokens and handshakes and symbols and all that. He couldn't even remember them all himself. But yeah, this guy was, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, this guy was like, in the whole world of a human being, this guy was right up there as a human Satan. So, and uh, the Beatles, yeah, they ran in with these occultists, this New Age gurus and all that. But yeah, they loved Aleister Crowley. They adored him. And they named the song uh, uh, Sgt. Pepper after him. So this is Ozzy Osbourne. He wrote a song about Mr. Crowley, right? And uh, it looks like he's concerned about Crowley. Uh, he goes, uh, Mr. Crowley, what went on in your head? Did you talk to the dead? Your lifestyle may be seem tragic. And with uh, the thrill of it all, you fooled the people with magic and you wanted Satan's call. And he's asking if he rode that white horse, which is uh, either heroin or cocaine, whatever the case. But uh, yeah, uh, won't you ride my white horse? I don't know what. <laughs> really that means but it's symbolic of course he says so 
And this is Ozzy Osbourne back then. And mind you, this guy used to bite the heads off bats and everything back in the day. So they all loved Alistair Crowley. So he's singing about Alistair Crowley, like, what wanted on your head? You know, questioning what made him deranged the way he was. And approaching the time of its uh, drastic standing with their backs to the wall. And that's talking about slaughtering Christians. And you got other songs here like Dark Horse by Katy Perry, right? It says, you want to play with magic? Boy, you should know what you're falling for. Baby, do you dare to do this? Because I'm coming for you like a dark horse. Are you ready? Are you ready? A perfect storm. Because uh, your mind wants mine. There's no going back. So if you watch the music video, and uh, yeah, it's sick. Okay, it's a good, it's a only ancient Egyptian a photography going on, all that stuff. That she's this uh, ancient Egyptian goddess. That literally she uh, fall, she takes the souls of the men that fall in love with her. Pure occultism, right? And so let's talk about Katy Perry's ET, right? Talk about uh, you hypnotize me. Uh, could you be the devil or could you be an angel? So in this case, it would be a fallen angel, right? And when you see the video, I'll show you some of the video later. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about, right? Your touch is magnetizing. feels like um, I'm floating, leaves my body glowing. And it, the, all this makes sense when you watch the video, yeah. Yeah, so basically, in yeah, right right there. So it's, uh, they say, be afraid. You're not like the others. Futuristic uh, lo lovers. Yeah, futuristic lovers. Different DNA, they don't understand you. Different DNA, yeah, it's a fallen angel. And when you watch the video, you go see exactly what she's talking about. You're from a whole other world, a different dimension. D dimensional beings with different DNA. Those are fallen angels. You open my eyes, I'm ready to go. Lead me to the light. And kiss me, infect me with your love. And fill me with your poison. Take me and, you know, take her as like having sex with her. Want to be a victim, ready for abduction. And boy, you're an alien. Uh, you're a touch foreign, so supernatural, extraterrestrial. Yeah, it's yeah, pure demonic. And the thing is, this is a song I was talking about. My girlfriend singing this, right, in the car. Whatever. I was like, you know what you're singing? You know, it's like, do you have any idea what you're singing? She had no clue about any of this. And uh, all the, you know, the Katy Perry fans, they have no clue. They'll just recite the lyrics and karaoke or whatever. Now I have a clue in the world what the heck is she even talking about. They think it's just some song, cool song, you know, the music and all that. So they make the music sound good. So it doesn't matter what they say in the lyrics. They're going to go with that, right? So this reciting this stuff, yeah? What are we calling? And here's the thing, too. I told her, too. It's like what you're literally doing is you're calling for a fallen angel to impregnate you. Even though you don't mean it, you know what I mean? But you're still you're reciting what she's talking about. And here's the thing with um, incantations, right? And the incantation of witchcraft needs to be repeated over and over and over and over again for even to somewhat take effect and work, right? So that's what they do in the music. That's why the lyrics are repeated. The chorus and all that, a lot of times it's repeated with certain incantations because you're casting incantations when you're singing these songs. You could be all rocking out in the car and all that, but you have no idea you're casting these incantations, you're kind of playing with fire, you know what I mean? So you got to be careful with this stuff. And here's the thing. If you see here a cool song again, if you listen to the songs, right, the music itself sounds cool. It's upbeat, whatever. It's like, all right, cool, right? Sounds positive, but if you actually listen and pay attention to the lyrics, right, really, if you have a song out there, you're on the radio, right, actually watch the lyrics. Go read the lyrics. Don't let the music play, right? Because the music will drown you out from uh, this kind of spiritual vision, you know? So you won't see what they're talking about. So go read the lyrics, study them carefully. Then you're like, oh, wow. Then watch the video, and when you see the lyrics, then I watch the video, the music video, then they blatantly show it in your face. And you're like, wow, I can't believe i just seen that. So there's some hand gestures done by these people, and you just seen that video, right? Them doing a triangle with us. Uh, again, and I'm not invoking nothing, okay? The triangle... Where it represents the all and I, right? Lucifer, right? The the diamond 
represents the portal to hell. And also, uh, in, the, in the occult, these things have many different meanings. So this here represents the penis as well. This here represents the vagina. Yeah. Everything in the occult is a per massive perverted twisted thing. Sexual unity. That's why in that Shut Up, uh, Shut Up and Let Me Go video by the Tang Tings, you kept seeing these things, right? And um, the guy and girl, because it's a merger of the two sexes, the androgynous spirit. That's Kabbalah. Which is the heart of Freemasonry and all secret societies, especially the Illuminati. So you're witnessing, and again, as many means to these symbols, the triangle represents the all seeing eye, that's where they do this, okay? It also represents the male genital. And um, the the triangle, or, um, sorry, I'm sorry, the, the diamond represents the portal of hell and also represents the female vulva. This penetrating the vulva. Yeah. The merger of the two sexes, the union of two sexes. And it's not a question. Yeah, the people say, oh, they just do that. Who does that? Who goes on TV or takes a picture, right? Who who does that? Do you do, uh, Go look through your family album, right? If you doubt this, right? Go look, look through your family albums and all that stuff, and you see regular pictures of regular people, right? You ever see somebody purposely do this in the picture? Or this? Or you put the hand in the sleeve like this purposely? What the Freemasons do, the right or the left handed path, that's what that means, right? You see people do this or go like this, like Billy Graham did. I mean, uh, Pat Robinson on Time Magazine, right? He's taking his Time Magazine cover photo like this. The Lion's Paw, right? I mean, Actually, let me get to that real quick. I don't want to go off topic either, but uh, this is important stuff here. So, hang on a second. Uh, Time Magazine. Oh, there it is right there. So, it's Pat Robinson. I know a lot of people ain't going to swallow this right because for some reason they love him. Yeah, look. Who takes a picture like that? Yeah, seriously, who, who takes a picture like that? Know what that represents right there? He's a Freemason. That represents the Lion's Paw ritual. Where they, when you reveal secrets, they have to do this, right? Uh, when you reveal secrets, they rip your heart out and feed it to wild beasts. Sounds ridiculous, but that's what the ritual is. Uh, you can actually look it up. Um, we've done many shows on Freemasonry, but I don't want to go off topic too much here. But yeah, who does that? Nobody does that. And no, he is not a man of God. These people are evil. When you're sitting there making millions of dollars, have this prosperity teaching all that's not of God, you know? It's, uh, and they do the same thing in Hollywood, fool people. It's all about deception. All of it. So I'll go through some of these real quick here. Yeah? Oh, look, all these uh, Al Shopton, political people, musicians, sports stars, uh, Hollywood people. Yeah, of all, all walks of life, look. Yeah, because who, who puts triangles over their eye? Or covers the eye? The hand over the eye represents the blind eye. You know, like, uh, let me demonstrate here. The hand over the eye is usually the left eye that's exposed. So they go like this, right? Cover the right eye to signify the um, the penile gland, you know, which is uh, the, there's so much involved with stuff in the occult world, right? The, the all see an eye, you know what I mean? Like, who does that? You know what I mean? You got Madonna dressing like Baphomet, posing just like Baphomet. And if you don't know what Baphomet is, it's an androgynous spirit. And it was created by a life of Slevi from the Knights Temple. The, he was the head of the Knights Temple at the time. It represents that's above, so below, androgynous spirit. And this is what the Kabbalah believe, guys. The Kabbalah believe that's God. Literally, they believe God is the androgynous spirit. It's God and Satan. And the light and the, that's where the yin yang came from. You know, the, the light and the dark. That's where that came from, right? So I believe that the, and when you see these movies like Star Wars, we've got to put balance in the universe, right? There's got to be a maintained balance of good and evil at the same time, right? In other words, they're equal, right? No, they're not. No, they are not equal at all. Evil is nothing compared to good. Nothing. The darkness is nothing compared to the light. But that's what that represents. That's what they want you to believe. As above, so below. In other words, just as much as evil, a powerful good as evil is still. That's wrong. They believe God is a male and female, a dro androgynous. They believe God, Satan, and God at the same time, like split personality. That's Kabbalah. 
That's the religion of Freemasonry. Lady Gaga, look at her. Look, 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 look at her fingers, right? Posing just like the Baphomet. I forgot. I think that's Jay Z. I think, yeah. Who does that? You know, poses for a picture like that. Yeah, not a coincidence, huh? And I hope people are skeptics are watching us. I really do. And the lightning bolt over the eye, by the way, if you see a lot of stars with lightning bolts on the eyes, yeah, the lightning bolt represents Satan. And I'm not saying lightning is Satan, no, uh, because the Bible describes Satan as a, like a bolt of lightning, right? That's why they use it. And they pervert things of God uh, for satanic causes. Yeah, the all seeing eye, look at that, huh? Yeah. Lightning bolt over the eye. All right, there you go, the devil's horns. Well, showing one eye. That's uh, Eminem right there. Yeah, because I, yeah, people just normally take pictures like that, right? I can see it now, man. <laughs> I can see this now. People are going to freeze. They're going to go back into this video, right? They're going to freeze it like this, right? Look, Dan Bedondi is a Satanist. You know, they'll do that. The people are crazy. They do, you know. Ugh, it's ridiculous. And they are talented singers or musicians. Yeah, right. They're witches, plain and simple. These women are witches. They don't get their fame and fortune because they're talented. Yeah, there you go. Talented stars right there. The snake, that represents the Madonna as well. That's the ancient, um, ancient symbol of the woman with the serpent. What does that remind you of? The God in the Eden, when Satan beguiled um, Eve. You know, the serpent beguiled Eve. Yeah. So much symbology involved with that. Yeah, look at all that. Yeah, not a not a coincidence. There's Kiss uh, as uh, Gene Simmons. Uh, he ditched the attempt to trademark the sign of the devil horn, so he wanted to trademark that for his. Like the snake around him, yeah. It's all cultic. A winged bat from Kiss Air, representing uh, a, de a demon. There's another one. I think this is Madonna with the snake around her now. You all see an eye, Katy Perry, right there. Look at that, huh? Necromancy. Look, these are music videos. Imagine your daughter, you know, 13, 14 years old that's into pop culture. She turns her MTV on, whatever, if they even play music videos anymore. Yeah, imagine seeing that. And yeah, what kind of image does that portray? Madonna, and there's right there the Kabbalah, right? New World Order. New Order of the Ages. Novus Order of Seclorum. With the All CNI. Yeah, that's uh, her. Uh, she's admitted uh, she, her and Michael Jackson both, uh, well, he's dead now, but they're into, they were into the Kabbalah, right? She's a Kabbalist. Look at the tattoos, yeah. Blatantly displaying it. Look, devil horns, like the goat of Mendes. Some more of these stars dressing as a Baphomet. Little Wayne. Yeah, because people just do that naturally, right? Yeah. Slayer look. Then putting up the other side on crosses and everything. The satanic star in the middle. Yeah. Justin Timberlake, look at that. And a tribute to Iron Maidens, uh, 666, The Number of the Beast. That was a cover album. We're going to get to cover albums next. This is uh, Gangrena Garcio. Santana's 666. I think it's some Mexican thing. Like the San Rita cult. Yeah, you can't make this stuff up, man. And that's right in our faces. Like right in our faces all the time. And like the band Black Sabbath too, right? You heard of the band Black Sabbath, right? So let me get to the internet. 
Black Sabbath was named now for what? How do they get the name Black Sabbath, right? It's a it's a famous rock and roll band, right? They got tons of albums. They've been around for decades, right? But Black Sabbath is a name that refers to a meeting of those who practice witchcraft or witch Sabbath or the occult of uh, superstitious rites. So it describes the Sabbath immediately preceding the Jewish fast days. So basically the morning, like the night after, is uh, the Black Sabbath because we have the Sabbath going tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, uh, Saturday is the Sabbath, God's Sabbath in the Bible, right? And, uh, you know, and they, with the cult, again, it's mere image, so at midnight, what's that? Black Sabbath was hosted by Ozzy Osbourne. It was what? Ozzy Osbourne was the lead singer of Black Sabbath. Oh, Ozzy Osbourne was the lead singer of uh, uh, Black Sabbath. And at the time... Ronnie James Dio. Ronnie James Dio. And at the time, they were Satanists, you know what I mean? So Black Sabbath is a mockery of God's Sabbath. And on the seventh day, you should rest and all that stuff, right? Yeah, they mock. it's a mockery of, that's why they went to midnight... Uh, the Midnight Sabbath, uh, Black Sabbath. And that's where they named the band after that. That's where they got the name from. It would just come up out of somebody's head, you know. It precedes the Jewish fast day, uh, in, yeah, the day of mourning. And look at some of the memorabilia they got there. Black Sabbath, we sold our souls for rock and roll. And the members of Black Sabbath said that, though. But now they made it famous. Oh, we come out. Oh, yeah, they sold the souls for rock and roll a minute, right? Now they, they're mocking it off this. T-shirts, all kinds of banners and posters. Look. Imagine that. You, you know, you got a kid growing up. Imagine that, huh? This Beth Midler right there. I sold my soul for rock to rock and roll. Mocking in it, right? So imagine that. You got a kid, right? Growing up, a young teenager. He's got a poster on the wall that says, I sold my soul. So, and he hears his favorite singer singing that. So what is a kid most likely going to do? I want to be like them, right? I want to sell my soul too, right? Yeah, uh, so see where the influence goes. It's horrible. It really is. We've got some more, little more to go here. So we're going to get to um, the 27 Club. So the 27 Club is... Um, Oops, album covers. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot something. Some of, the, some of these here are album covers, right? And before we get to the 27 Club, uh, these are album covers, right? And we you just seen some of the uh, symbolism I showed you, right? So now you got your eyes open to symbology, right? Once you get eyes open to symbology, it's not going back. Everywhere you go, you drive, whatever, you see it everywhere. It's induced everywhere. There's a book uh, called Codex Magica by Tex Mars, Pastor Tex Mars. The late text Mars. I got this book. It's a big, thick book, right? It shows you the meanings of all these symbols and all that. And once you open your eyes to symbolism, guys, I'm telling you, it's like taking that red pill in the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere you go, the stuff sticks out like a sore thumb. In other words, you could drive down the road. You go, right? You go by shopping plazas. You go by all this stuff, right? All, all your life, right? Open your eyes to symbolism, right? Drive down that same road you've been down all your life, right? It's a whole new world after that. You'll be like, wow. All these years, I've never even noticed that. And this stuff sticks out like a sore thumb. So now that's saying, right? Now look at these uh, album covers. Left eye, all seeing eye. You can see all the demonic symbology involved with these things. There's tons of album covers, right? All seeing eye, all seeing eye. Look, hey, look at more all seeing eyes, right? These are album covers. Demonic triangle, look at that, huh? And by the way, the triangle pointing down represents the vulva as well. So um, the female anatomy is either the triangle or I mean, the diamond or the di uh, the triangle pointing down. The triangle pointing up represents a penis. So yeah, look right there. It's all C and I. Def Leppard, look, triangle, yeah. Same stuff, look at all that, huh? What a coincidence. Pyramids, oh, that's a big one. You'll see pyramids everywhere. All seeing it, look at all these albums. These are different artists, different covers, right? Look. All seeing I in the pyramid, right? Look, here we go. And if you want to fact check this, go for it. Go look at these people's albums. Mr. Bungle. Yeah. Look at, see that circle? The serpent right there? The circle around the eye, that's called a robrus, right? That's a symbol for, it's a pagan symbol for eternity. 
which represents the dragon or the serpent, but in its own tail. It's satanic. Look at that. Elitist, right? right? Yeah, it's an album, right? This is Masonic right here. The Masonic uh, symbol right there represents the male mountain of female. Also represents uh, the Gnostic God, the G is the G spot in sexuality. And it also represents the Kabbalah, the inside of a Kabbalah star. The Gnostic God, which is, you know, fake God, of course. Yeah, look at all that. All these album covers, more pyramids, more triangles, more Sinai's. Look at that, huh? Yeah. But yeah, they call us a you know, conspiracy theorists because we sit there and notice all this. 50 top album covers right here already. You've seen all this demonic symbolism. What a coincidence, huh? That all these top albums use this, openly display this stuff. Look at that, huh? Lady Gaga, look. Yeah, blood coming from her left eye. The right eye is covered. There you go, another eye is covered. Yeah. Look, the third eye, brother. The band named after the third eye, which is the pineal gland. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Look, more pyramids. Look, this one has a pentagram on it. Selena Gomez, right? Yeah, look at Selena. With the eye covered, yeah. More pyramids, yeah. Sublime, look, yeah. Shows a reptilian there. Yeah, it's crazy, huh? Look at that, 100 albums so far. Look, it's all the same, all of it. And mind you, these are, these are uh, artists, right? From decades apart, some of these people, right? That probably didn't even know each other, right? Have no, nothing in common, uh, nothing uh, tied to each other, right? All having the same t type of stuff. So you can't make the stuff up. Why is it always one eye? Why is it a triangle? Look, different artists of different companies and everything else, different labels. Look at all that. More pyramids. Oh, look, we're, we're down 150. Wow. 150 albums. And there's more. Let me see how far this goes up to. Wow, 300. Look. That's crazy. Look at. If you go into a record store, if they even still exist, look, you could, you could fact check all this. 400. Look, all triangles and eyes. Every, just about every famous artist out there. Look, 441 artists. These are different album covers. And artists and record label companies and all that. 441 of them so far. With the symbolism. I'm going to put this in the chat room, guys, if you want to check it out. So hang on. Uh, album covers. If you guys want to check that out, go for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't make the stuff up, and I encourage people to fact check that. So we're going to move into the 27 Club, and that that's crazy, man. 441 this guy put together. Four, you, know, you just like went randomly searching album covers and rec for the record labels and all that stuff. And, and, and the, again, this is music from generations, okay? Music from decades of these people apart from each other, right? Some of these people weren't even born yet when these other labels you know, were alive, these are artists, I mean. So why is there a coincidence? One, one eye, triangle, diamond, some of them. Uh, yeah. Pyramid, yeah, it's not a coincidence, guys. This is the music industry for you guys. And again, I'm not saying everybody in the music industry is part of this. You do got some legit people out there. You know what I mean? You do. And uh, you got some good songs and all that. But they'll never have the fame that these uh, people sell their souls out for. Never. So moving into the 27 Club, this is... Uh, they call it the 27 Club. It's a formal list consistent mostly of popular musicians, artists, and actors, and other celebrities who died at the age of 27. And although the claim they say is a st statistically spike for the deaf musicians, 
The age has been refuted by scientific research and remains cultural phenomenon about celebrities who died at 27 noted for the high risk uh, lifestyles. So, it was, you know, Kurt Cobain, like we mentioned earlier, right, he died at the age of 27. He offed himself. And it's uh, popular. The 27 Club, it was, I guess, 1994. The idea of the 27 Club arrived in a popular Zeitgeist movie. Which that movie's disgusting. You know, I, I think that's the movie they're talking about, right? Not sure, but whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a list of these people. So you got to see all kinds of uh, famous people here. Uh, Alexandra LeVay, uh, Louis uh, Chauvin. And it shows you what they died by, the date of death and the cause, right? And just point out some famous name. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not too good pop culture, or whatever the case, but Joe Henderson, uh, Malcolm Hale, these are all famous people at the time. Brian Jones, I think he was uh, of the Beach Boys, I think. Oh, Rolling Stones, yeah. All right, founded the Rolling Stones. He drowned at the age of 27. Uh, Alan Wilson, uh, Jimi Hendrix, yeah. Uh, drug overdose, age of 27. Uh, Janis Joplin, oh, drug overdose, age of 27. Like I said earlier, you know, it's, the drugs are induced in uh, the occult. Because uh, uh, what happens is uh, it enhances the effect of demonic possession over the person. That's why it, the drugs are used. And sometimes when, um, yeah, when they start speaking out, people get murdered. You know, which way a lot of people believe, what's the name there, did. Uh, what's the name of the rapper that they... Tupac, yeah. So a lot of people, because Tupac was coming out about some stuff in Hollywood, a lot of people believe he was murdered uh, for that reason, you know. And so, yeah, when Satan gets done with you, he spits you out. Look, Jim Morrison, oh, died from heart failure, 27 years old. Look, it's going through the list here. And again, just type in Google or go to Wikipedia. They got a list of all the... The famous people who died at 27. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain was sacrificed by a... Uh, Suicide, yeah. Well, supposedly, but yeah. It was a sacrifice for what? Oh, uh, his wife, uh, what's... Courtney Love. Courtney Love, yeah. So they weren't highly into the occult, so a lot of people think that... Uh, Kurt Cobain was a sacrifice, ruled a suicide, you know? A sacrifice by his wife, Courtney Love, so... Yeah. So yeah, they said he was so. My brother, he, uh, he's good with the music stuff, but he said he was uh, he was so full of drugs that there was no way he could off himself with a shotgun. You know what I mean? And uh, the, a lot of people do believe that his wife, Courtney Love, killed him in a sacrifice. But look, yeah, just a long list of people, uh, all at the age of twenty-seven. All these famous people. You know what I mean? So call that a coincidence, call it whatever, but it's kind of weird. That's what the 27 Club is. And uh, so, which ties into, uh, which is, um, oh, Robert Johnson. He was, he also died at the age of 27. So this is where the conspiracy starts getting a little, uh, little tricky, right? So this is Johnny Robinson. So, uh, yeah. Did Robinson, uh, Robert Johnson sell his soul to, the, uh, to play the Blues, right? Many of Johnson's own lyrics seem to point to a supernatural force behind his music, leading many to suspect that he had gone to the crossroads and made a pact with the devil. Songs like Preaching Blues, Crossroad Blues, Hellhound on My Trail, and Me and the Devil Blues invoke the haunting imagery of being chased by hellhounds and answering a knock at the door to find the devil standing outside. As Johnson rose to local fame, Sunhouse tried to warn him about the dangers of working in juke joints. The women all liked Robert. He was a good looking boy. And when he got good enough to perform, I used to tell him, when a gal pats you on the shoulder and says, play it again, daddy, don't get too excited. She'll probably belong to someone else and you might get yourself killed. It seems that Johnson didn't take his friend's warnings to heart because a short time later he passed away, quite possibly poisoned by a jealous husband or boyfriend. But even his death was tainted by strange rumors. Many people who saw him on the day he died reported that they saw him crawling on his hands and knees, 
barking like a dog. Those witnesses suspected that it wasn't poison that brought about his demise, but the devil coming to collect his due. Ten years after Robert Johnson's death, his music achieved national fame, and 30 years after his death, he was honored as a legend in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Many of Johnson's own lyrics. Johnson and Zimmerman had practiced at night in a graveyard. Other people believed that Robert Johnson hadn't stopped there in his quest to master the guitar. They said he'd sold his soul to the devil to gain his talent. Another blues man explained how this process worked. If you want to learn how to play anything you want to play and learn to make songs yourself, you take your guitar and you go to where the road crosses that way, where a crossroad is. Get there. Be sure to get there a little before midnight that night so you know you'll be there. You have your guitar and be playing a piece there by yourself. A big black man will walk up there and take your guitar and he'll tune it and then he'll play a piece and hand it back to you. Many of Johnson's own lyrics seem to point to a supernatural. So yeah, and uh, credit to this video here with American Mythology. So just want to credit the video here. So anyway, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, and I got some more stuff coming here. So the crossroads, uh, let me see, I got to get some slides on this. So Robert Johnson here. Oops, what's going on? I forgot I had videos in here. So hey, give me a second, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, can't believe I just moved the slides. Uh. Hang on a second, guys. Let me just uh, do something here. Can't believe I just, oh, let me just do this. All right, here we go. So. All right, here we go. <laughs> so, Robert Johnson's grave, right? So, and that that's now it's famous at Crossroads. So, so, this is a Crossroads. Back then, there was no tar and cement there. So, you've seen an old picture right here of the Crossroads. Back then, you know, that's what it looked like. So the same site now looks like this. So they put this guitar up there. It's between Route 61 and 49. So the same site now, they put this up there to rep, you know, because it's known, famously known for that. And uh, so that's uh, where Robert Johnson claimed that, you know, this man, this black man met him in midnight, right? And literally sold his soul. Tuned his guitar to play great and everything else. And uh, so uh, there's three evil spirits that, meet at crossroads so uh, i'm going to go through this, uh, some of these demon spirits right number one is the devil right and number two is um it's a uh, he kate right uh, older than the devil they say it is uh which the devil's older than this but this is a uh, occult knowledge right so he kate appears in the greek mythology in association with crossroads legends also known as the queen of the night the goddess also looked after the entrances, uh, dogs, light, uh, magic, and witchcraft. He has a poisonous uh, giant's ghost and uh, necromancy, and a modern witchcraft practice, uh, he Kate festivals, which me and my brother both, we're, um, we actually witnessed one of these, uh, not directly, but we came across one of these, uh, these he Kate festivals. And coming down, we went to this place. We, <laughs> we heard a bunch of dogs yelping. I guess the cops told us there was a lot of dogs that went up missing, people stealing dogs, right? So, because we used to help the police out in that place where we went to, right? We were ghost hunters at the time. And so, we heard a bunch of dogs barking. So, we all went and ran into the woods, right? And it happened to be on the date. Of the, I forgot the date. I should have put that up there. It's called the Hecate Festival, right? It's where, um, it's not necessarily four paths, but anywhere where paths meet, right? In the middle, where many paths meet, right? Could be two or more. Um, they conduct this ritual, right? It's a sacrifice done. On this ritual, right? And literally, on that date, right, we heard the dogs, but we all run in there. Right in the middle, there's blood and fur everywhere. It's disgusting. So whatever, and I, I, 
I don't even know. I, I, I don't even know. We heard a bunch of dogs yelping and barking, and all of a sudden, they were yelping. You could hear they were uh, uh, something was going on with the dogs, right? Something, whatever happened, tore these dogs apart. All of us went and run into that place, and when we got there, it was fur and blood everywhere. It was disgusting. Right, and uh, you know, it was hard to tell the police what happened. It really was, uh, yeah, because it was like again, the uh, dogs went missing in the neighborhood, and they used dogs for a sacrifice, right, for the CK festival, right. I'm not trying to go off subject, but this is uh, the the demons that are involved in this crossroads thing. Then you got this guy over here, it looks like Papa Shango from the old WWF days, but his name is Park Ligre, has different functions with um, Holtan Voodoo. But what interests us here is what, uh, hang on, so let me pull this up on my slides here because I can't read that. Crazy stuff, man, really is, uh, hang on a second. All right, so Papa Lee Gray, he's the guy with the hat there, he's a black gentleman, uh, has different functions with Haitian voodoo. But with what interests me here is the role of the keeper of the intersections, roads, doors, and so on. He's actually a liminal figure between the spirit and mortal worlds, able to communicate with both much like uh, Hermes. And however, Papa Ligre has a dark aspect in the form of uh, Kalfu, is also known as uh, Kalfor, who controls the crossroads. So what's the significance with this crossroad there? Right, and uh, if you look into this, right, and the devil was also known as, uh, and this is a rich, uh, he Kate witchcraft festival ritual, right? They simulate the sun, you know, little things they create, right? He Kate's generally into witchcraft and all that, and that's uh, that's the devil right there in the crossroads. And the devil takes many forms, by the way, guys. And you always know, uh, when you see things about he Kate, right, you're going to see like a goddess type figure that has three heads. And look at the dog on by her, right? And it's not coincidence that the dogs were sacrificed where we went. Uh, it's crazy. And the path carving ritual of Hecate. That's exactly what the path looked like uh, where we went into the monastery there in the backwoods there. That's where the um, the dog sacrifice took place that night on the Hecate Festival. I forgot well, what nights that is. It's uh, something to do with astrological event that uh, the Satanists use. In, uh, hang on, let me see if I could pull that up real quick. I hate forgetting stuff. <laughs> it really it drives me crazy. Oh, uh, man. Let's say, guy. Uh, Hecate Festival 2023. Is it Rhode Island? That's weird. Yes, there's a lot of Rhode Island Latino festivals. It's weird. It's a uh, it's a goddess type. Uh, hang on a second. It's by her fires and see the triple head, the Heat Cape Festival. This is a witchcraft website here, byherfires.com. Festivals and days of time of sacred Hecate. So they all, oh, see an eye with the fire. Look at that, huh? This is back in 2014. 30 days of Hecate, 11 festivals, sacred days. But anyway, yeah, uh, the date we went out to the monastery there was uh, Hecate, the days of Hecate, so... Yeah, these are the, um, some of the dates. So I should have done more research on it before I even talked about that. But yeah, uh, it's crazy, man. It really is. And not to confuse people, but yeah, this is where crossroads meet. And Papa Ligre, yeah, like Leg Bell, whatever his name is, right? Some in uh, master class, he's to learn his origins and characteristics. This is a crossroads university, right? This is a legit website. Actually, let me get to that website here. Hang on a second. This is a website, right? And I don't encourage people to go on this, but pop, this is a pop a voodoo type um, person, right? 
Papa Lee Gray master class, right? And then this master class about Voodoo Lou, uh, Papa Lee Gray, it appears to have served in New Orleans, Voodoo. That's where the crossroads and uh, Robert Johnson, right? Yeah. This course will cover up the origins on how to, to develop a relationship with him and how to safely serve him as an uninitiated practitioner. So they want you to buy this for $225, right? They want you to buy this for 200 a course, right? And to learn the path of destiny is large, large, like a uh, large penis. So like I said, everything they call it is uh, perverted. But yeah, this is a website, that uh, uh, Crossroads University. Basically, how to sell your soul. Look, yeah, how to develop a relationship with him. This is uh, where I said Satan takes many forms. Yeah, this is Satan, one of Satan's uh, demonic forms. Again, this is called, what the Bible calls this is a familiar spirit. It looks familiar. In other words, it looks like a, a person or whatever the case, or it could look like somebody you know, whatever. But that's how these demons take um, their shape because they're not going to appear to what they are because they're going to scare people away. But if you appear as this little old man, right, it's going to be less likely you got to uh, reject them. You know what I mean? Oh, it's some old man that's trying to help me, whatever the case, right? But this is a website. They, they, they teach you how to set up his altar. To serve the uninitiated practitioner, learn several crossroad rituals, learn how to petition him for per, uh, pretty much anything. In other words, yeah, like Robert Johnson did. I want to be a famous musician, and he did it. Exclusive membership site and forum, yeah. It's disgusting, it really is. So these are the three main demons that are involved with uh, this um, disgust, you know, this uh, witchcraft. So this here is a Devil at the Crossroads legend, right? And uh, there's a devil. This website points us out to icsedwick.com. Talks about uh, three powerful people at the crossroads. Right there. Yeah, three powerful people to meet at the crossroads. So they're saying, hey, these three powerful people you can meet at the crossroads, right? Like uh, Robert Johnson did, to get famous and sell your soul, right? They point out the devil, right? They point out Papa Legbray. And they point out Hecate, the queen of the crossroads. So again, I want to emphasize, right? He, whether it's Hecate or it's uh, Papa or, uh, Shango, whatever the heck you want to call him, right? Yeah. It's Satan, literally, and it's called a familiar spirit. So they've got different forms, different images. It's a, it's a familiar spirit. So compared to you uh, as this beautiful woman, compared to you as this harmless little old man, but it's the same spirit. It's a familiar spirit uh, that's directed by Satan. So it'll promise you, if you uh, uh, read all the stuff and all that, it literally promises you anything you want. All you have to do is sell your soul, and you get anything you want. But there's a price to pay for that. Yeah, eternity in hell, literally. And again, if people, anybody is even dabbling to that or um, even like joked around, even joking around or whatever the case, uh, you need to repent. And if you are locked into one of these contracts, guys, and that demon's not going to tell you this, but you know what? Or the record label company, the way out of that right now is to denounce it all, pray, get on your hands and knees, pray to Jesus Christ, ask him for forgiveness, right? Pray for forgiveness, repent from what you did, but that means turn away from it, right? And Plead the blood of Jesus upon you to break that uh, uh, that uh, that contract, and it's done, just like that. You your soul, you're not no longer obligated to Satan no more. It's that easy. But the hard part is you need to turn away from everything about that. And uh, the other thing too is uh, uh, Satan, right? Satan's got to be pissed. Excuse my language, and he's got to do everything and anything possible to make your your new walk with Jesus a living hell. So that's why you need to constantly rebuke uh, rebuke Satan with Jesus, right? And it's a spiritual battle, and eventually he, uh, Satan goes away because he knows you, he he you don't he doesn't own you no more. So if you are locked into one of these contracts, these blood rituals, whatever you've done, doesn't matter. Turn to Jesus Christ, and the blood of Jesus washes away that con those contracts. So I just want to point out some of these uh, things, and there's also the gods of music before we get to. 
to the next part of the show, which uh, we're going to be up at 11.30, which is uh, 20 minutes. So we got an after show coming up. So And that's when I'm going to take your phone calls and all that too. So um, yeah, Lord of the Music, Shiva, right? I think that's Hindu or Buddhism, whatever the case. But yeah, uh, Shiva manifests himself as a variety of ways, which Shiva is another image of Satan. Yeah, Satan takes many forms. Satan's got millions of names. Satan's also Apollo, right? A Greek and Roman god, lowercase g, by the way. Yeah. Also a god of music, right? And Pan, right? This is a pagan god, right? The myth of the Pan flute. You Notice how it's always something associated with a goat or a horned creature? Yeah. Not a coincidence playing music and instruments and all that to lure people into things. And he was uh, the god of fertility and a patron of shepherds and huntsmen. Uh, he presided over all uh, rural occupations, was chief of the satires and head of the rural divinities. And I believe that um, he was a son of Hermes, right? And a wood nymph that would, uh, which is a demon. Here's the thing this, um, Pan is. Uh, mirror, uh, another image of Baphomet. So in the witchcraft world, right, you in a you know so-called white uh, right-handed uh, part of witchcraft, right, the white magic, right, you learn about Pan, right, the horn god of nature, right, harmless horn god of nature, right, that's what they teach in Wicca, right, but that's not who he really is. It's the left-handed path, which is Baphomet, the god of Mendes. The same thing. It's just different images of it. it's a fake, you know, a perception. That's all it is. Perception into deception. But and you got Lucifer here, right? Lucifer is a fallen angel who was the head of the Ministry of Music in heaven. And when he was in heaven, yeah, he was a Ministry of Music. And it said that of him, he was the most powerful and beautiful angel. I'm sorry, the most beautiful angel and the most and the director of the flow of music in heaven. For praise and worship. Now again, okay, and I'm nobody saying that music is evil, right? Satan mirror images everything of God. So he, of course, he's going to use something beautiful as music, right? For his purpose. To deceive, right? And we made a complete demonstration of that. So no matter if you think it's uh, Pan, Apollo, Shiva, Hecate, uh, Papa Lige, it's all of Satan, plain and simple. No matter which way you want to call him or her or whatever, it's Satan. It's an unclean, familiar spirit that represents Satan that promises his contracts. So Satan takes things of God and perverts it to his advantage. And he does it right here. And, um, yeah, it's crazy, right? Uh, August 13th, yeah, in September was a uh, heat festival. They have different dates, whatever, but yeah, it's all it's all the same. You know, not to confuse everybody, but all these things are the same. You know what I mean? It's a, to deceive people purposely and get you literally to sell your soul. It's horrible. It's disgusting. So we got coming up um, in the after show here, and we're going to take your phone calls then, you know, phone calls and comments and all that. So, um, yeah, it's called, uh, which we're going to go into midnight, right? Uh, the fault. But first, I want to tell you what we've handed show. off this week. So this is driving to off the show we Congress did a couple weeks ago. To the White House. Uh, with John Hall and to the Pentagon and Brian, Arrow Office. September 23rd, rapture the of the world and office is tasked with investigating this. So we can go so, through the list of, course, of the there, market, of uh, course, material and we're going to show you all the ministries the that are predicting the rapture to happen. Well, whoop, we're uh, 53 minutes away from the rapture. So, yeah. So all these ministries out there promoting, we're going to show you this, right? Promoting. The rapture's happening on the 23rd, which is in 57 minutes from now in Eastern Time, right? But first, I want to tell you what we've handled. So, we're going to do the rapture countdown, the false rapture Congress countdown. Congress and to the White House and to the which Pentagon Arrow Office. There is no the AARO office uh, is tasked with investigating. It's crazy, man. It really is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 these people are just nuts. They really are. Uh, and again, the, the Bible says, uh, plain and simple. Let me get to that slide here. Right there. On Matthew 24, 36, and that day and hour, no man knows, not even the angels in heaven. But I guess for some reason, these ministries think they know. So I want to thank everybody for joining us here on the show. Uh, we're gonna, again, um, 
I'm going to cut off here. I'm, I'm actually, let me post the link before I do that. Hang on a second. Uh, YouTube. So if you subscribe to my channel, if you're not, please do. I'm going to post the link here. And I'm going to join us about 20 minutes from now. Uh, we're going to go live. And there it is, uh, after show. Let me put that there. And so there's the link right there for the after show. So, and guys, if you like the broadcast, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And we also got a donation page if you want to help support our ministry and uh, the rent. And uh, it pays for the rent, I'm sorry, and the studio equipment and streaming services for Rumble and all the other expenses that come with it. So, I hate even, hate even putting that out, but we do that uh, on the shows there to help support it. So if you guys want to support this ministry financially, uh, please uh, donate whatever you want. And like the Bible says, give with your right hand and not the left hand doesn't know about it, right? In other words, give and, you know, forget about it, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, don't advertise, oh, I gave Dan Bedondi 100 bucks. you know what I mean? Just give in, in secret. And God will reward you openly, you know what I mean? So, um, and the best thing you could do uh, is just pray for us. That's number one. Pray for this ministry and all affiliates from NYC TV. And please, guys, check out NYC TV. You got FOJC Radio with Donna and David Carrico. You got the Remnant Restoration with uh, John and Patricia Hall. And you got uh, the Midnight Ride coming up tomorrow night. Actually, no, I think the Midnight Ride might be canceled because the rapture is going to happen. <laughs> just joking. You know what I mean? Uh, just making mockery of that. But, oh, uh, yeah, the Midnight Ride tomorrow night, uh, Saturday night, 11 p.m. Eastern with David Carrico and John Pounders. So check out their awesome stuff. And they also got uh, Breaking Babylon. They got all kinds of cool shows going on. Uh, so and check out Brian's channel and Jason's channel, too. The links are in the description. So uh, other than that, guys, we'll see you in exactly 20 minutes from now. So on this channel, guys, put the link in the chat room. And I'm going to put it in the comment section too. So, uh, and if you're not, if today is September 22nd, right? So if it's not September 22nd, uh, this ain't uh, live hours. This is live now, but when you watch it later on. So there's no after show for you, but <laughs> try to save the confusion. So, all right, guys, I will see you in 20 minutes. God bless. Shalom. And you are the resistance.